right, this is for Thursday. One, two, three, four, November 4th. Welcome to Lunch Break with Pastor. We've been talking about crossing Jordan and we're looking in the book of Joshua for those lessons in crossing the barrier, which is Jordan, to go to the other side, which is the promises of God, which Joshua was able to take the people of God into. There's a whole book in the Old Testament called Joshua, whose name literally means in, the, in Greek, Yeshua, which is the name of Christ. So, and he's a type of Christ in the Old Testament. Awesome book. And I can't recap everything for you. You'll have to check out Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. This is for Thursday. We were talking about how in Joshua chapter 3, verse 4, want to give to the work of God, hit the shop now button, takes to the donate now at mfhlb.com. And now we'll jump into this. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 4 yesterday, it talked about knowing the way, that you're going into something brand new. You need to know how this new walk, how to you're going to get into the promises of God. It's a new level that God is calling us to. You've not gone this way before. You've not crossed Jordan before. You've not gone into the promised land in this area. This is how this is going to work. This is the way. That was the instruction that the leadership was to give the people. And as we look up this verse, and I'll read the verse, yet there shall be a space between you and it. What is the it? The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, which is their relationship with God. And we'll talk about that probably tomorrow. With the priest bearing it, with the leadership doing it, you know, not you go do it. I'll stay back here. We saw an awesome movie, a true story, World War I, my wife and I did about um, this one platoon that was um, obeyed their leadership and, and, and took this area in World War I, fighting with the, um, on side with the French and the English against Germany at the time. And um, they were told to occupy this one area and they had no support whatsoever. And, and they were left abandoned in this area, but they held their ground because that was their instructions. And it was a true story. And I remember they really celebrated the captain of this particular um, group of men, 500 men in strength. Um, only 200 were left when they were actually, um, they actually overcame. So they just stood their ground. And it always showed the captain going out with the with his troops, and he, he led them in a battle. And his opposition, um, the German that was in this particular battle, he never went out and led his troops. He was always behind watching them in amazement. But you never saw him leading, leading the troops. So a leader is doing it. You can't lead something you're not willing to do. You have to, you have to do it. And people have to watch you do it. So in this verse, there was a space between you and it. They were commanded to tell the people, the ark, the relationship with God. And about 2,000 cubits by measure, come, don't come near it so you know the way. Watch us so you can learn that you must go for you've not passed this way before. Another little bit about what the word going, um, knowing the way. We talked about what it means to know the way. I broke down some meanings for the way. It also means this, to tread. Now look at this, because I, I love this. Because with a new walk, you know, I talked to yesterday about having knee replacements, and I literally am less bow-legged than I was, and I actually walk differently than I've ever walked before. I actually, I'm walking in a new walk. So what's interesting about that is, and I've talked about this before, our walk is just not our mode and how we walk. It's how we live and how we talk. And I can show you that in the word here. The word for knowing the way, the word way, also comes from a word to tread, right? Walking, right? But treading is more than just walking. You look at the word, to tread. And it actually means to string a bow by treading on it by bending. So to string their bow, they'd have to step on the bow, hold it down, and bend that bow so they could string it because then they were going to launch something. And the word way comes from a word that means to tread, to string a bow by treading on it and bending. And then comes the word archer. 
Now, what does that got to do with walking or treading or away? A lot. Archer. To guide, lead, thresh, or tread down. We don't just walk with our legs or our feet. We walk with our words. We walk with what we launch out of our mouths. We talked this week about the leaders were to command the people in a good way that this will happen. We will be crossing over this. We will be inheriting the land. You need to prepare for it. They were to command. In other words, they had to have a certain talk. They were to say what the, their leader was telling them to say, and that was Joshua. Joshua was commanded by the Lord and by Moses saying, be bold, be strong. Those, you read the first chapter in Joshua, and there's a lot of instruction to him to do and say God's word and to be of good courage. For you will teach this people and you will take them into this land. So our words are very important. It's a lot to do with the words, our words, or our ability to launch something like an archer has a, has a lot to do with how we walk. Archer, to tread, string a bow by treading on it and bending. Archer, to guide, lead, and thresh, and to tread down, not just with your walk, but with what you speak. Good example, Joshua being told by Moses, being told by God, be of good courage. You must, you will bring this people into the land. The officers being commanded, prepare to tell the people prepare. This is the way to walk. Keep your eye on the ark. When you see it moving, you need to go after it. <laughs> go after that when you see it moving. Amen. And I did a little study on the word ark, the ark of the covenant. What was in that ark? Because they were told to keep their eyes on the ark of the covenant. It represented their relationship with God, things that they had been through at a nation, things where God had proved to them who they were what their relationship to him really is, what it really is built on, how it really works. They were to keep their eyes on this Ark of the Covenant. What is a covenant? It's a, it's a relationship, um, like a constitution. You know, America is, is built on the, um, you know, our constitution. This is our covenant with what we believe. Um, a nation built on an idea of freedom. It's our constitution. And it's a, a document, a covenant, a league that's made. And God has made a covenant with his people through his son. And we can see as, we, as we've journeyed this week, how do we cross Jordan? Who got them to cross Jordan? Joshua did. What does his name mean? Yeshua in the New Testament, a type of Christ. Um, and... And he was the one that Moses was told to designate after him to bring the people into the promised land. We're going to talk more about the Ark of the Covenant tomorrow when we wind this up this week on crossing Jordan. Because God truly has and truly does have plans for us. He is ahead of us. He will bring us into that. He will show us how to get there, how to walk there, how to talk there, because he's bringing us into, and it may not be a place we've ever been to before. And they were to keep their eyes on the covenant, their eyes on where God had already showed them and the things that are in that ark, of what had already happened in their lives and how important it was. And it's, it's good to have something familiar to help to teach you what's next. You're able to go, oh, this is just like that one victory we have. Oh, this is just like, um, you know, well, God taught me this a long time ago. I can apply this now in, in this situation. Oh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's just taking me a place that I've never gone before. Crossing Jordan, Friday coming up. See you tomorrow.